Hey Internet, Harris here. When the M1 MacBook Air came out two years ago, I genuinely thought it was one of the best computers, no, probably the best computer Apple has ever made for students. It really killed it in two major aspects, well three, portability, performance, and battery for under $1,000 and under $900 US. Uh, with a student discount. It was sweet. So when Apple released the M2 MacBook Air with its redesign and M2 processor, it had, um, let's just say, a lot to live up to. So this is my M2 MacBook Air review from a student's perspective, keeping in mind what a student needs and doesn't need, and whether this is worth the increased price point. And in this video, I will be dividing it into one major pro, one minor pro, one major con, one minor con, uh, and then, of course, I will start this video with my general conclusion. Let's get started. Okay, so look, here's my conclusion. This is an amazing machine and I love it. It's sleek, it's clearly the newest and most modern laptop from Apple. It's awesome. And they've added some nice design improvements and just overall, it feels like a 2022 laptop. However, if I'm being real, the old MacBook Air for a student, like I said, was so good that even two years later, if you don't need a ton of performance, and I think as a student, you know uh, whether you need just kind of the average amount of performance for basic student purposes, or whether you're going to be doing something specifically more demanding because of your major or side hobbies, and then you would need to upgrade the specs on this machine anyway, and then you might as well look at the 14 inch MacBook Pro. So I think for most students, just go for the M1 MacBook Air. For a few students, who have the money or parents who have the money and are buying kids a laptop, M2 is awesome, no problem recommending it. But again, for most students, M1 is probably the way to go. Okay, so the big pro, the hardware and the design all the way around. Of course, this has the newer, bigger screen. So it's 13.6 inches instead of 13.3, but it comes in a body that the total volume is actually smaller than that of the M1 MacBook Air, which was already a really portable device. So the width is exactly the same. It is a tiny bit deeper, so just a tiny bit deeper and a little bit thinner all the way around, but it no longer has that iconic tapered curve down to the edge that came to almost a razor. This is just thin all the way out and it's awesome. And I didn't love it at first, but after about a week of using it, definitely prefer it because it just, it feels thinner as a, as a total package. And then on top of that, it is a hair lighter. So you're getting this bigger display, but in a machine that is just as portable and in some dimensions, a little bit more portable than the previous Air. And not only that, but you're getting the modern design language. You're getting the notch up top, which there are some downsides to, which some people will complain about more than others. I personally love it. I think it's sleek. I think it's really nice. And I do love the almost full screen design of this computer. Not to mention there are some small improvements such as Touch ID. It's bigger and the function row is now full size keys instead of the previous Mac, which were like half size or less keys. Not a huge difference at the end of the day in terms of the keyboard um, or the trackpad. And in fact, I do kind of think that the M1 MacBook Air had a slightly better keyboard and trackpad, but that's up to the individual. This has amazing hardware and the improvements made to this are really nice, especially in the display, which is brighter um, and bigger and just great all the way around. The one piece of software that is game changing is from the sponsor Blinkist. And Blinkist is a really simple concept. They do 15 minute-ish summaries of the top nonfiction books out there and there are thousands of them. This allows you to get the best information from these amazing nonfiction books without having to put hours of time into them. And what I really like is that some of these books are better than others. And if a book isn't worth your time, you're able to see that with only giving five or 10 minutes and you can clearly see that that author's ideas aren't for you and you can move on go to a better one. I recently been reading Digital Minimalism by Cal Newport, who is an awesome author, and it talks about more intentional and holistic usage of technology. And he also really encourages high quality leisure time, which means that when you are not working, when you're not doing your trade, you're using that time, not productive in the typical American sense, but you're using it in a high quality leisure. That's not just killing your brain or completely wasting time, but something that is meaningful and fulfilling. But you can listen to the summary for this book and thousands of other nonfiction books with my coupon code linked down below. And you can also get a seven day free trial and then 25% off a premium price. And I love listening to Blinkist when I have 15 minutes in between anything I'm doing. 
Now the little pro, so that was the big pro, the overall redesign and, and display, uh, as well as keyboard. Uh, the little pro is MagSafe. So if you had a MacBook in 2017 or earlier, you know what I'm talking about. It's that magnetic charger that you can trip over and it won't destroy your computer. That's back. And that's nice for a couple reasons. One, it allows for fast charging, which I personally don't really need because this has such good battery life anyway, and I always just charge it overnight if I need to charge it at all. But it also means that it frees up your USB-C ports if you're somebody that needs more than two or doesn't want to uh, kind of waste one port for charging. And while you can still charge your computer with those USB-C ports, you now can have those dedicated to accessories and adapters and displays and anything else. Again, I think the reason this is only a little pro is because I don't know that many students, the average student uses more than two USB-C ports. I think the average student just uses one adapter that has all the other accessories and, and peripheries and ports that you need. Now the big con with this computer, the reason I wouldn't recommend you go get it right now uh, is because the price has gone up and the performance is iffy with that price. So if you've been following the technology industry closely, you might have heard that the MacBook Air M2 comes with a 256 gigabyte SSD that's a little bit slower, well, about half the speed of the 2020 MacBook Air for more money, of course. Uh, so this is a little bit confusing and Apple says that even with the M2 processor, this is still faster. And, and that's true in most circumstances. Um, and it's true for me who uses an external SSD for most of the things I'm doing anyway. And I don't transfer a lot of large files directly onto the SSD. But for the average student who starts using a lot of tabs and maybe opens up music and a couple other windows and programs, the 256 gigabyte SSD may start to show its limitations and you have to upgrade to the 512 gigabyte SSD if you wanna go back to that 2020 speed of performance with your drive. That's annoying and it leaves kind of a, a sour taste in my mouth from Apple. So if you really want the true performance of this machine, you not only have to spend the $200 more, but then another $200 more to get the 512 gigabyte SSD. And the reason I loved the M1 MacBook Air is because I could recommend it with just the base eight gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigabyte SSD. Granted, I, I still would recommend upgrading to 16 gigabytes of RAM because sometimes you have too many tabs open and the computer would freeze up about once a month. That was my only real issue. But this machine is more expensive and even with it being more expensive, does have some limitations compared to the old MacBook Air. It's still a fantastically quick machine, but so is the 2020. Now, of course, this machine is faster overall, especially if you get the faster SSD, so don't let me make you think that it's a slower machine, but in certain circumstances, at certain price points, it can actually be a bit slower, which is just not very intuitive. And then the little con for me, I guess the little con is just the fact that the older MacBook Air is still being sold and you can so often find it for a pretty good discount. So when comparing these two machines, um, this is phenomenal and I'm gonna keep using the M2 MacBook Air because I already have it. But if I were starting out college and I was looking for a machine, and especially if I was under a certain budget, I would go M1 MacBook Air. You're gonna be happy with either. They're great and if you really need more performance, you can upgrade this, but you know, unless the portability means everything, you probably wanna go with the 14 inch MacBook Pro. However, I totally get if you want something this thin and light and don't wanna go with something as uh, heavy and thick as the MacBook Pro. Anyway, let me know your thoughts on this machine, on all the other machines Apple makes. Let me know if you have any questions down below. Again, this is an absolute trooper of a laptop. It has insane battery life, really good performance, super portable just a slightly higher price than last year.